Hello and welcome to another edition of English Vocabulary Matters. Today we're going to be doing trivia quiz number three. And as I did in the previous two, I'll be reading out some trivia questions to test your general knowledge in English. And I'll be giving you four different options to choose from. So let's see if you can guess the correct answer before the time runs out. So let's kick off with question number one. Where did Saint Nicholas, who was partly the inspiration for the modern Santa Claus, come from? Do you think that he came from Turkey or Spain or perhaps India? Or maybe you think the answer is the Netherlands. Which of those four options do you think is the correct one? Well, in fact, the correct answer is the first one, Turkey. Although I have to say that in his time it was not Turkey because Turkey didn't exist as a country. It was actually a city called Myra in an area that was called Asia Minor. But it is in the, the same uh, area as the modern day country of Turkey. And St. Nicholas actually existed during the time of the Roman Empire. So it's going back quite a long way. And he was an early Christian bishop of Greek descent. And his legend for generosity kind of mixed up with other characters like the English traditional character of Father Christmas and became what we call today Santa Claus. So let's move on to question number two. In which century was William Shakespeare born? Do you think he was born in the 17th century? The 14th century? The 16th century? Or perhaps the 15th century? Do you have any idea when William Shakespeare was born? Well, in fact, the correct answer is the 16th century. William Shakespeare was actually born in April 1564. And obviously widely regarded as one of the greatest writers in the English language. And he lived in a town called Stratford-upon-Avon, which is in Warwickshire, in the, more, roughly in the centre of modern day England. Very beautiful town. I've been there a couple of times. Uh, definitely worth a visit. So question number three. How long did the Roman Empire occupy Britain? or what was then called the Roman province of Britannia. Do you think it lasted for 230 years or perhaps 433 years or maybe 25 years? Or do you think that 67 years is more likely? Which of those four options do you think is the correct answer? Well, the correct one is actually the second one, 433 years. Much longer than most people realize. And they left an indelible mark on Britain, um, which can be seen in many different places, but particularly in the place where I'm from, which is a city called Chester. It was actually founded by the Romans. They built the biggest fortification in the whole of the province, and they called it Diva Victrix, and later it evolved into the modern day city of Chester. And you can still actually see the parts of the Roman wall uh, that surround the city and the largest amphitheater in the whole country, uh, which is obviously ruined, but still quite impressive. Uh, moving on to question number four. What is the most used word of the English language. Do you think it is the word the or have or get or this? Which of those four do you think is used most frequently in the English language? Well, the answer is the first one, the article, the definite article 
the. The others come in a little later down the list. For example, have is number nine in the list. This is number 21, and get is way down there at number 47. I think a lot of people would have chosen get because they think we use it a lot, and it does have a lot of uses, but obviously a structural word like the grammatical word is going to be used a lot more frequently than a verb. Okay, so let's move on to question number five. When did the construction of Gaudí's Sagrada Familia Church in Barcelona begin? Do you think it began in the year 1906, 1882, 1949, or 1961? Which of those years do you think is the correct answer? Well, in fact, the work on the Sagrada Familia began in the year 1882, the second answer. So they have been building it for over a hundred years now, and it still isn't finished. So construction began in March 1882 and originally was under the direction of the architect Francisco de Paula Villar. But in 1883, Mia resigned and Gaudi took over the project as chief architect and transformed it with his own inimitable architectural style. And of course, he devoted the rest of his life to the project. And when he was, when he died, I think he was actually run over by a tram, uh, he was buried or interred in the crypt of the Sagrada Familia. And when he died, only about 25% of the project had been completed. Moving on to question number six. So, what is the origin of the word grog? Which is a drink made of rum and water given to sailors in the British Navy. Do you think it comes from a French word, originally meaning rough? Or the name of Admiral Edward Vernon, who was nicknamed Old Grog? Or the third option, the sound that sailors made when they drank it. Or perhaps you think it's derived from a Latin word meaning to be drunk. Which of those do you think is the most likely? Well, in fact, I can tell you that the correct answer is the second one. It is derived from the nickname of this Admiral Edward Vernon, and he actually was the person who ordered his sailors to dilute their rum with water in order to prevent drunkenness. And so it became associated with his name, with his nickname, Old Grog. And later sailors referred to the alcohol itself as Grog. In fact, in Australia, this idiom is still used to refer to alcoholic beverages. And we also have the adjective groggy, if you feel groggy, it kind of means you feel as if you are a little drunk, perhaps sleepy and tired. So, moving on to question number seven. How many strings does a modern harp have? Do you think it has 12 strings? Or 24? Or perhaps 47? Or Maybe you think the answer is 50. Which of those do you think sounds correct? In fact, the answer is the third one, 47. Harps have 47 strings and also seven pedals. So it must be a very complicated instrument to learn. Harps are actually really ancient instruments. They've been around in one form or another in all different countries from as early as around 3000 BCE. So moving on to question number eight. Who wrote the classic novel Frankenstein? Do you think it was written by Mary Shelley, Bram Stoker, Edgar Allan Poe, or H.G. Wells? Which of those do you think wrote the novel Frankenstein? 
Well, I can tell you that the correct answer is, in fact, the first one, Mary Shelley. Frankenstein, or the modern Prometheus, was an 1818 novel written by English author Mary Shelley, and she actually started writing it when she was only 18 years old. And of course, it has been adapted into numerous films and has a very large cultural influence. Bram Stoker, on the other hand, was responsible for writing the classic story of Dracula. Let's move on to question number nine, the penultimate question. So, in the acronym LASER, what does the A stand for? Do you think it's amplitude, average, amplification, or auxiliary? Which of those do you think is the meaning of the letter A in the acronym LASER? Well, the correct answer is the third one, amplification. The full acronym is actually light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. The first laser was actually built in 1960. So it's a fairly recent invention, obviously has had many different applications, but laser is basically a light that is emitted in a very strong beam and can reach um, very far distances. And we see them represented in um, science fiction as weapons, but of course they can be used in um, reading media, for example, in DVD players, they were used very frequently, and also in industry for cutting or engraving. So let's move on to the final question, question number 10. Which of the following was invented first? Was it the telephone, the bicycle, the TV, or the car? Which of those do you think was invented before all the others? Well, I can tell you that the correct answer is the second one, the bicycle, which was invented in the year 1816 by a German called Baron Karl von Dreis. His invention is regarded as the first bicycle, although it has to be said that it did not have any pedals and was propelled by using the feet, hence its name, the running machine. So the other inventions were as follows. The telephone was invented in 1861, the car in 1886, and the TV in 1925. So there we have it. That's the end of today's quiz. I hope you've enjoyed it and perhaps learned something. And don't forget to check out my other videos. And if you've enjoyed this, like and subscribe. Thank you. And until next time, goodbye.